Um, we just rest and um, talk for like a minute uh, before we introduce um, our next speaker. I'm excited for this. Uh, I had a conversation, we had a call with him last week, or th I think this week, and during that call, his, the conversation was amazing. And he spoke like a father. Uh, um, now I'm applying to be his adopted son. <laughs> uh, it's, um, he was, he was um, passionate when he spoke, and I really loved um, the passion in his um, tone. Um, Rob, you were in the call when we had that conversation with him. Right? Definitely, yeah. I, I, I definitely. I don't want to drop the names. I, I want you to just, you know, just hit the people with a surprise. But you know, um, yeah, I, I definitely connected uh, with what he was saying. It, it's something that resonated with me. I, I can remember almost word for word everything he said. That's how much impact it had. And I'm really excited for this talk. Uh, I was excited before, but after hearing him speak to us, um, man, he he was one of the people that inspired my tweet after that um, after that session there. Uh, if anyone saw it, so. Um, yeah, I'm super excited for this one. Cannot wait. Okay. So um, without wasting much time, um, I'm going to introduce our next speaker. He's a dad of two teens. Like I said, I'm applying to be one of his children. And um, according not, to him... You're not a teen, though. Dude, <laughs> you know what his, his kids um, inspire him to learn new things and always remind him of um, that life is always um, all about a journey, a journey to learn and grow. Um, he's going to be talking to us about um, you are part of the stack. That's interesting. I love the topic. It's, 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 it's a thought-provoking one. Uh, his name is Yusuf Raj. I hope I pronounced that well. Um, uh, let me give a bit abstract. Uh, people are essential to be part of the stack. Do we work as a team or in them? At 43, he had two stats. That's a nice story. And he's going to share um, a lot with us. And without giving much away, uh, I'm going to pass the mic over to Yusuf Raj. The floor is yours. Do with us whatever you wish, sir. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, for a while, I was just wondering, is it my turn next or Bilal? Because you guys was, you know, putting on all those compliments. And I wasn't sure if you guys were talking to me because you said inspiration. But thank you for saying that. You, you know something? Uh, time goes very quickly. And uh, I can remember when I first started using Linux. Uh, no one knew what it was. Uh, I had Red Hat 7.2. And I just couldn't figure out why I kept coming up with a blank screen that said, log in. How would I log in? It frustrated me. And then um, I decided, no, I got to keep at it. And I've been keeping at it ever since. Uh, now, like 24 years later, like I said, uh, my, name, well, my name is Yusuf Raja. I'm 43. I live in Durban, South Africa. I am married. and. I have two beautiful teenage kids, my daughter and son. And like the guy said, I realized that you will learn from everybody. And my children are one of my greatest teachers. Uh, and teachers are probably the most important people next to your parents. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about empathy and why that matters not just in the workplace, but in your life and for your future. And uh, I do have some slides that I was going to use, but you know what? I'm going to forego the slides because I think uh, we all get so caught up in the jargon, the words, uh, the new marketing terms, uh, you know, trying to figure out our DevOps from our SRE, our SLOs, our SLIs. Uh, you, you guys know it. there's so many acronyms, there's new types of technologies coming out. Uh, thank you, HashiCorp. I just started getting used to 0 0.14 of Terraform and then 0 0.15 is out. Uh, and that's both exciting and a bit stressful. So we often talk about the exciting aspects, but what I want to talk about is what do you do when things start getting stressful? What happens when things change in your life, how does that affect your career and how do you cope? 
and I'm going to use my own life as as an example or a, a, you know a, an idea of how what happened. So, like I said, uh, I had a passion for Linux and open source, and I wanted to pursue that so much so that I got involved with a nonprofit organization who were interested in deploying um, school laboratories. And we actually deployed some of the biggest ones here. One of them was like a hundred seat lab with thin clients. And this was about 17 years ago. The idea was to encourage the kids to get used to something new because people were uh, more familiar with Windows, but also to expand their minds and to get the community around the school to get involved. The thing that really got me hooked on to open source wasn't Linux, it was the community. And when I say the community, I mean the actual people, the human beings. Uh, I couldn't believe how much stuff I was able to learn just by listening to and uh, reading other people's experiences. As a result of that, I was able to now start getting work because I had a skill that other people didn't have. Even though I had my MCSE, uh, most people still didn't know Linux and a lot of servers were running things like Apache and MySQL running on Linux. And I was one of the few people who knew, but I only knew because people shared that knowledge. And that's the part that I really enjoyed, the sharing, the feeling that you were part of something greater and as you contributed to it, you grew and everyone else grew. However, um, as technology has uh, sped up and we have sped up, it's become difficult to keep pace with the demands of life. Currently, I mean, we are all obviously here for the Hashi uh, talk, but right now in the world, there's a lot of turmoil. We've got a global pandemic that we all are struggling against. Uh, we are all struggling with various types of financial issues as a result. I don't think there's a single human being who isn't facing a level of stress that we have not seen before. And how do you deal with that? Well, interestingly enough, even though we may not be uh, first responders, uh, we build technology that actually responds very quickly. Uh, an example of a technology that will respond very quickly, uh, and uh, someone was talking about earlier on, is pager duty. If you've ever heard that pager go off, you know how quickly you are going to respond as well. And if you ever wanted to know how well you're going to perform under pressure, let that uh, pager duty go off and then see how well you're going to perform. Uh, I'm talking, well, not from the pager duty experience, but from the, and like I've paused now, uh, something I, wa I wanted to say. Yeah, this is this is important. That's why I should have used the slides. Uh, May, is May is Mental Health Month. When I was younger, it was a lot easier for me to absorb a lot of information really quickly and for me to uh, wrap my head around the technology and be pro-efficient as it. As I grew older and more responsibilities came out, I didn't notice that things were changing. I decided to open up my own consultancy and I actually did very well. But something that doesn't scale as easy as the cloud are human beings. We build the technology to help us with those things. But we ourselves, uh, we have certain limits. And quite often, because of the modern, well, the world we live in, we assume that we are able to magically uh, pass those limits. And life has a very interesting way of bringing you down and grounding you. Uh, similar to when the, to that pay to duty uh, alarm, it suddenly brings you back to reality, to a hey, something needs to get done. And how do you get that done? You know, the best way to do anything and tackle anything I found is as a team. When you know you have people that you can trust and rely upon to assist you when you are in need, uh, confidence is something that you have uh, bound, uh, is boundless. 
and that support can really help you succeed. So I would encourage everybody to start um, cultivating within themselves the mindset of assisting one another. And I will tell you exactly why. I found it really difficult, though I had the technical skills and understanding, to get into the space I wanted to get into. Look, I wanted to be a certified SRE. Now, I don't know if anyone even knows what that is. If everyone even knows what DevOps is, please explain it to me clearly because everyone's got their own idea. But basically, to me, um, SRE is like MMA for geeks. It's, uh, sorry if I offended anybody, uh, I'm a martial arts fan, but really, it's, you're battling it out and you have to have many varying skills and you've got to have discipline on top of your game. Fortunately for me, I have had the opportunity to work with a team of people who I'm very grateful for uh, at Stack IO. They're a small team and this is where I started learning these things. I started learning that there's a lot you could do in a small team if you're willing to share. But I didn't know how to apply those skills with different types of people across boundaries and uh, time zones. This was all, is all new to me. So remote working is new and all of those things. And this is what is going to be the norm for most people. We are going to be working from home and or we are working from home and our communications like this right now, even though I'm talking to, I don't know, maybe 10 or maybe a hundred people and who knows who else is watching it. There isn't any feedback. I can't get any uh, facial cues. I don't know if people are bored or people are interested. And what happens over time without us realizing that we lose the ability to feel. So. Uh, I would like to ask all of you something right now. How are you? And how are you feeling? Not how, how you're thinking. We, everybody who's here is definitely an intelligent person. Otherwise you wouldn't have stuck around to hear my wise words. <laughs> uh, but really, how do you feel in, within yourself? Are you happy? Are you contented? Do you feel like when you get up and start your day that it's going to be a brilliant day and when you put your head down at night that you feel you've contributed to the world? Honestly, I don't really feel like that. I wish I did. And there's sometimes I do. And those times are when, again, we face certain challenges and together we can overcome them. You see, you can get to the top of the mountain, but if there's no one there to enjoy the view with you, it's pointless. And so we need to ask ourselves, why do we build the types of technologies we build more than how do these technologies work? See, I've been breaking my head on, how does this work instead of thinking about why are we doing it? And when in working with the team at Stack IO, I realized that it's a lot more about why we do it than how we do it. And why we do it is for people. And to understand what it is they need, you need empathy. Empathy is a word that's not as popular as e-commerce or e-mail. Um, we use it as a buzzword and a marketing term. But really, when's the last time you actually wondered or, or sat and thought about what it felt for your coworker, uh, you know, what's going on in their life. Um, I'll give you some examples and, and be honest with you. I'm a hypersensitive person. Uh, this talk, I wanted to pre-record. I wanted to make slides and that way I would not have to face the fear of being in front of the camera. Before every stand up, I'm afraid to be in front of the camera even though I know the people behind the camera uh, care about me, are interested in what I say, I add value to the team. I don't feel like that. I suffered severe anxiety and depression. What does this have to do with 
uh, stacks and technology. It actually has everything. You see, we live now in a time of hyper-convergence. I live and work in the exact same space from home. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, but I work for a company that's based in Canada and Toronto. So I start working with them at one o'clock in the afternoon and they finish at 11 o'clock my time. So I had to adjust to uh, the time. And then I work with people from different countries. I have people that I work with from Brazil, I have people that I work with from Colombia, uh, and learning how to communicate with them and be sensitive to their culture were things I had to um, learn on the job. And so six months later, like I said, I started afresh. I was uh, glad that I could start from the bottom. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to wipe away the slate and see what it's like if I had to rebuild. And in rebuilding, I was able to iron out some of the kinks from previously. And so, like uh, Fidel said, uh, like a father, here's some advice. Um, when you want to move forward in this world of cloud, don't kid yourself about it being easy. <clears throat> and I'm saying that because everyone says, learn to code. It's not that difficult. Oh, you know what? Um, Kubernetes is the latest, hottest thing. You've got to know uh, Vagrant. You've got to know Vault. Yes, these things are cool and I love them. But learning them uh, takes time. It takes effort. It takes dedication. These are serious tools. So you've got to be uh, empathetic with yourself and empathetic with those that are uh, learning with you. And then you've got to also be flexible enough. And this is the difficult part, uh, strong enough to recognize that you're going to fail and you're going to feel embarrassed and you're going to find the problem with someone else is going to find the problem and you're going to think you were dumb about it, but that's okay. That's all part of learning, right? My whole life I've been learning. I don't think I'm going to stop learning. A problem that I would like to change though is that this type of monologue that we've been having, I would like to change into a dialogue. You see, it's not enough that uh, people like Anita, uh, and Anita, I loved your talk. I resonate with everything you said, but it's not enough that uh, people like Anita and myself let you know about open source and let you know about these things. What we need to do is have an actual real impact. And the way we're going to have that impact is at the grassroots with our own community. Uh, and by that, I mean letting more people into our industry, into the cloud industry, not excluding them. And being more proactive, proactive in going to people, educating them about what these technologies are, how they can benefit them, and uh, transferring that skill, that knowledge. There's many ways for us to do that. Africa has got a lot of uh, potential and um, Ubuntu <laughs> is now known as an operating system, but it's actually a very deep, uh, a word of very deep meaning. Uh, and it means to, to know what it actually it means empathy. It means I am because you are, that we are one. And I would like to bring more of that human Ubuntu back into uh, our African open source world and maybe feed it forward to the rest of the world. And uh, I'm hoping that this is the beginning of those types of things. Yes, I can do technical talks as well. But before I, I do that, I just want to know from you guys, 
can we get together? Can we work harder at this? Um, I'm willing to put in the effort with you, but I'm getting gray, guys. There's so much work to do. There's so many more people we need to bring on board. Let's do it together. Um, yeah, basically, that's what I had to say. I hope somebody out there got something out of it. Please don't give up. It is difficult. I'm not telling you it's difficult to tell you. Don't try. I'm telling you it's difficult. That's why you should keep at it. It's worth working at it and insist that you want help. Ask for it and you deserve it. And I'm, I'm speaking to all the engineers out there as well. Let's help everyone get aboard. And uh, yeah, wish you guys the best. Thank you, guys. Thank you well, so much. That's, that's amazing. I, I promise you it would be deep, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know where to start. I think, you know, there's this thing that they say where you, you should read the room, right? So I'm looking at the YouTube chat right now and I'm reading the room. And you know when there's not really much being said? It's because people are just listening, taking it in and processing it and relating everything that's been said to themselves they evaluate in their life how they live their life the the way that they go about doing things i think one of the things that you said that really struck a chord with me was um showing empathy for yourself you know um we we often try to promote this culture of of uh showing empathy to others our, our communities our end users and so on and so forth right and and rightly so we should but how many times have we kind of shown ourselves empathy? How many times have we had an issue which is affecting a customer and we have struggled and it's caused our, our, our levels of stress to increase? And then, you know, the people closest to us that we love are the ones that bear the brunt of it. Like we should really show empathy to ourselves. Um, you know, Fidel, I don't know if you have any more comments or if you want to bounce back on anything I've said, Yusuf, but like, honestly, like I said, there's... So much here to unpack. I, I think Rob, people are going to be thinking about sorry, this for days to come. You said something really important. And look, uh, I'm not on any social media. I dropped off social media. I'll be honest. I got disappointed with the cloud and the internet because it's supposed to bring us closer together. But I want to be able to come and hug you guys, you know, to really have a, a human touch. I know it sounds very uh, cliche and, and, and that type of thing. Uh, but honestly, what you said about the stress about uh, when you're frustrated with something and you couldn't get it right and you're angry, it breaks you down. And then people that you care about get hurt. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that we can heal other people's hurt just by being, by helping them solve those problems. This has happened to me uh, the guys, uh, you know, I have to say, the guys at Stack IO have really opened up my eyes uh, by showing me that I don't have to be afraid. It's okay. They'll help me. And you know what? That's exactly what I want for others. I can't do it myself, for others, but I really wish that, uh, uh, you know, it gets paid forward and stuff. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. You, I know you guys know how difficult it was to accumulate that knowledge. Passion is not enough and discipline and grit and perseverance and there is going to be tears a lot of tears but that's how you build great things you it, it doesn't just happen you work at it and let's be honest right we are africans we're not afraid of working hard but i really think right guys let's be honest there's a lot more that we can show the world. I, why are we waiting? What are we, who and what are we waiting for? Can't we get together? Can't we hold each other higher? We are better than this. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. The, the first blog article I ever wrote, it, it stemmed from, uh, I was working, uh, as a consultant with a company that I'm not allowed to name, and we were implementing this 100% serverless infrastructure to introduce a, uh, a payment system. And 
at the time when we were doing this, it felt like nobody had done this before, right? So we'd run into these problems and, you know, we had AWS support contracts and we'd reach out to them for help. But the problem is even the support engineers couldn't help because this was like, I don't want to say groundbreaking, but it felt like that just because every corner we turned around, there was, there was just nothing new there for us. So when we were able to solve certain problems, we understood some of the limitations and some of the things that weren't documented. I felt compelled to write a blog article about it. And the, the main motivation for that is I thought to myself, well, we've spent probably about four weeks, just two whole sprints trying to solve this, right? So now we know what the answer is. Are we going to sit there and let the next person who's trying to do something similar run into the same thing and spend two sprints and, you know, bang their heads against the wall? And maybe they're not going to find it because they don't have the same support network that I had. So we can invest the time to find a solution. So I said, no, what we need to do is we need, we need to document this and, you know, and hopefully it helps someone. If it doesn't, then it doesn't, but at least we've tried, you know, at least we've tried to help the next person. And that's one of the reasons why I do the job that I'm doing is it's, it's to help people. It is all about community. So I, I really, really resonate with this. So Rob, uh, documentation, good documentation is a sign of deep empathy and high EQ. That, that's what I want to say, because, uh, to take the time to explain it, uh, and we are experiencing the pain of what it is to write good documentation because we deal with people of different cultures. English is not their first language. So making sure that that document makes sense to a wide audience is not easy. And uh, I'm glad you said that. And uh, what Anita said about things like translating and uh, cultural sensitivity with the technology. Uh, we need African technology because this is Africa. We can still use the same tool sets and stuff, but our, our environment is so unique. You, you gotta be here to, to, to know what it's like. And uh, yeah, uh, it'd be great to see excellent Linux documentation in the different languages, Zulu, Koza, uh, Saswati, uh, you know, all the different African languages. And uh, yeah, I, I just hope that uh, this won't be some empty air that I keep uh, talking about that uh, we'll see some real uh, concrete stuff. I'm, this is a good sign of it, uh, but like, uh, like fathers are, uh, we want to see that A plus, we want to see the report, right? Because you know what, ask any parent, right? Their child is the most important thing and once you have a kid, every human being you look at, you will see that that's somebody's child, right? So how would you want somebody to treat your child, right? Wouldn't you want them to treat them well? So that's how we should be with each other. We are just children inside, right? And we just want to get along. But uh, being adults, <laughs> is is adulting is hard it is adulting is hard so uh, lucky we got each other to support one another and uh, yeah sorry for all the machinists guys but uh, sometimes you gotta um, be vulnerable and put it out there and i did it and uh, i hope that i don't regret it i hope to see people really pulling up. And by that, I mean, we'll know with the next uh, Hashi Talks. The, uh, we would like that the internet would break when that happens. Not cut us off, but the sheer traffic, you know. <laughs> Fidel, would you like to share some thoughts on this? I feel like I've been so passionate about this. I've kind of just been yeah, um, I think uh, this is one of the reasons why we record these sections. Um, I think um, his talk is not something you just um, listen to and have opinions immediately. It's something you listen to and you listen to it again to digest it. And as for me, I, I can tell from experience, um, when I started my tech journey, I had an amazing support system, someone that I always ran to when I had issues. but. 
looking at a lot of people coming up now, they have not been that great support system. We've been shouting a lot about community, open source, community, open source. But at the end of the day, we're losing the most important thing, which is the humanity aspect of it. We are all human first before we are DevOps engineers, quality engineers, system architectures. So I feel when I, for me personally, I didn't go through that um, lack because I had um, mentors around who held my hands, showed me the right way, helped me put through one or two things. So I really understand where he's coming from. And I also have this, um, this mindset that as Africans, we've been on the receiving end for far too long. And it's high time we start, we start giving out. We start, um, although we ship out a lot of talents, but the issue is we don't retain those talents. I can tell you um, the amount of talents I've seen that have left the shores of Africa to go to Europe, to go to the US, just because there are better opportunities, better infrastructures, better everything. So I feel we should start bringing this, all of this back home as Africans. We should start bringing um, the empathy back to the coding. We should start relating to people on human levels, not on um, technology levels and stuff. So I really, I really um, love your talk. Um, you hit so much points that I would spend um, th the rest of this night um, thinking and pondering and knowing how my own contributions have been to the people that have come after me because if I had so much help while I was coming up, what have I done for the people behind? So this is a real, um, this is a topic that touches home for me personally. So um, gracias for that. Also, thank you for being so vulnerable. That's, it's, it's, um, it gives us the strength to also be vulnerable. There's something that we as humans really, really struggle with. Uh, and I think you, you have led by example, and it's through being vulnerable that people can help we can help people understand us and understand our pain in order for them to to help us and with that uh fidel uh i think we have our last speaker of the day so over to you to do the no <laughs> and uh to end um today's section it's been an amazing um day uh had uh, both um, men women children all everyone come here and like show me how much less knowledge i have and i will bring it on stage um one of um a great one great guy um his name is bilal um, he's a vmware certified instructor and he's red hat certified engineer um, the front thing is this, his um, talk is actually recorded, but it's short recorded. After the recording, we're going to have the conversation with him. He's on the call. And he's going to be talking up to us about automating NXX T with Terraforma. And um, Rob, if you're ready, um, the stage is yours.